Tony Wed was a movie that became controversial for simply existing. It all began with this tweet that single-handedly broke the internet, where this guy claimed that Pixar fell off due to how this movie worked. On the one hand, people rightfully called out the hyperbolic nature of this tweet, along with insulting the crew who worked on this movie. But quickly, things got out of hand with the whole internet having a meltdown over this movie's backlash, as if Tony Red was the first Pixar movie to receive it. Um, Cars 2 and the Good Dinosaur, anyone? Also, literally every new Pixar movie that has come out in the last couple years has been scrutinized for its art style. For example, when Onward was first released, there were people claiming that Pixar has the same face problem by comparing Ian Whitefoot's character design to Wigwini's. I also recall seeing tweets where people complained about how the humans walked in Seoul. Heck, just last year, people were complaining about how Luca used the cow art slash grubhub art style, with even journalists claiming that Pixar was losing its touch because it had a slice of life story. In short, the backlash Tony Red received for its art style isn't anything new or unique. Okay, now that that mess is out of the way, let's actually talk about this movie. So taking place in Toronto, Canada during the 2000s, Tony Red follows 13-year-old Mei Lee, who has a mostly good relationship with her mom, Ming, except for the fact that she's overbearing, and quite frankly, psychotic. Because of this, Mei doesn't fully express herself around her, not wanting to risk straining their relationship. She does, however, have a supportive group of friends who accept her for who she is. However, one day, Mei's entire world suddenly gets turned upside down, when she wakes up one day to find herself turned into a giant red panda. She later learns that this is a curse passed down to each woman in her family every generation, ever since her ancient ancestor prayed to the gods for these powers, in order to protect her village during a war. And said powers are turned into a giant red panda. Um, wouldn't it make more sense for her to turn into something like a dragon, or any other animal you associate with fighting? Oh wait, they needed it to be a red panda, because they're cute and marketable. Never mind. Anyway, there is a ritual that can be performed when the moon turns red that will contain the panda spirit. However, there is just one problem. The ritual is on the same night as the concert where Mei and her friends favorite band is performing. Yup, truly the most harrowing conflict in cinematic history. So the bulk of this movie's story is Mei and her friends using Mei's panda powers in order to raise money to get tickets for the concert. And during all this, Mei not only gains full control of her panda powers, for the most part, but also comes to liking having them, and embracing it. The main conflict revolves around Mei and her mom slowly drifting apart until the climax where Mei ditches the ritual to go to the concert, and this first real act of defiance causes her mom to lose it, resulting in her panda spirit being released after many years of being contained. So there is this big bombastic climax where Mei and her mom finally have their big confrontation as her family and friends set up another ritual to contain Ming's spirit once again. The movie ends with Mei and Ming reconciling, and Ming wants to accept her daughter for who she is, while Mei wants to fully embrace herself and keeps her panda powers, becoming a riddle or furry. This movie's plot tells a typical slice of life coming of age story. That seems mundane on the surface, but the complexity comes from the interpersonal struggles of the characters and the conflicts between them that gradually build up throughout the movie. However, for me personally, the situations that Mei and her friends get into weren't all that entertaining to me, to be honest. And it's not because I can't relate to teenage girls growing up in the 2000s, as several of my favorite animes such as Asamaya Dayo, Lucky Star, and Ichigo are just about a group of girls getting into wacky everyday situations, which I find to be highly entertaining. However, this isn't the case with Turning Red, as I just don't care about these characters wanting to go to a boy band concert. And aside from one or two funny moments, there really isn't anything that kept me invested. As for the film's central conflict between Mei and her mom, it has a decent build-up and pay-up, plus it fits with a slice of life story. Although way into the film, the theme of generational trauma is brought into the mix, which caused people to compare this movie to Encanto. But whereas Encanto executed this theme within its story perfectly, it unfortunately fell short in turning red. It always starts to show up way into the movie when Mei's relatives come over to prepare for the ritual, and her grandmother tells her to be wary of her panda powers. It feels so good to let it out. Each time you do, the stronger it gets. So no more panda. Later, her dad tells her about the first time Ming turned into a red panda during a fight with her mom, with the implication that she was responsible for the scars she has. And finally, during the final stage of the ritual, Mei sees a younger version of her mom, the straw over what happened between her and her own mother. But really, that's about all we get, and I think the generational trauma and how it affects the family could have been freshed out more, especially with Ming and her mom. Your mother and I 
were close once, but the red panda took that away. Or better yet, they could've just kept it to the conflict between Mei and Ming. And that just about covers the movie's story. Now let's discuss the aspect of the movie that practically broke Twitter, the animation. Honestly, after seeing the movie for myself, I could see why there are people who found the visuals to be uncanny. Heck, I myself wasn't too fond of them. More specifically, the designs for the human characters. Star-wise character designs have become more common in CGI animated films in recent years. One of the best examples of this is in the recent Pixar movie, Luca. But whereas the character designs in that movie were insanely charming, the ones in this movie honestly look uncanny to me personally. I heard that these designs were inspired by the Studio Ghibli art style, which probably wasn't the best idea considering that Ghibli's first CGI animated film didn't turn out very well in the visual department. Plus, the character designs in Turning Red are debatably more similar to Wallace and Gromit. But either way, the transition to CGI for both of these art styles was quite rough. Another aspect of Turning Red's animation I wasn't too fond of are the moments where stylization is used to exaggerate the emotions of the characters, which on paper sounds great, but this means seeing the already uncanny character designs up close. The execution was just off in my opinion. Although aside from the visuals, the actual animation is pretty good. Plus there are other aspects of the visuals that are done pretty well, like the shots from the scene where Mei is making her way to the concert. Also, these backgrounds and the sky were very charming. I also really loved the design of Mei's red panda form, and the facial expressions for it were absolutely perfect. Although, I can't say the same for Ming's red panda form, as infusing some of her physical traits into it just didn't turn out right. Weirdly, the best thing about this movie's animation is the food. I mean, look how glorious it looks. Although, isn't it odd how the food looks a million times better than the humans? So overall, the animation and visuals department was a mixed bag, at least in my opinion. Okay, now that that kind of ones is out of the way, let's move on to... The characters. Mei was a serviceable protagonist, even though I'm a bit burnt out on these try-hard quirky characters. Mei's mom Ming is the other central character in this movie, as the heart of the story revolves around the mother-daughter relationship between her and Mei, along with becoming an antagonist of sorts in the movie's climax. Also, she's quite a psycho. Like when she first sees Mei's romantic drawings of her and her crush, she immediately jumps to him grooming her daughter, and even confronts him about it. Jeez, chill out lady. Okay, I get the point of scenes like this is that they're meant to be awkward in a relatable way. Though I argue that this is a bit much. And again with the female generational trauma, I believe there was a missed opportunity to explore her strained relationship with her own mother when it comes to the panda curse, as well as having it tied in with the relationship between her and Mei. Now that would be compelling. But I guess like with Mei, she serves her purpose in the story fine enough. And then there are Mei's friends. While Priya was cool, I couldn't care less about Miriam and Abby. There's also Tyro, who has a bit of charm to his character, as he feels like a typical boy you get from a 2000s cartoon. Although, despite being antagonistic towards Mei throughout the entire movie, he immediately becomes part of her friend group after they discover that he too is a fan of that boy band, Poor Town. Even though the last time he and Mei interacted, she straight up attacked him in a fit of rage, even injuring him in the process, possibly scarring him for life. Finally, there's Mei's father, Lin Lee, who's my favorite character in this movie. While he starts off as just a butt of jokes, there's a great moment where he sees how happy Mei is with her friends, along with being a red panda, and then he encourages her to embrace who she wants to be. People have all kinds of sides to them, Mei. The point isn't to push the bad stuff away, it's to make room for it. Well, that just about sums up my thoughts on the characters. Guess there's no better time to address something in this movie that I personally really hated. And that is, the sexualization. And I don't mean with the dialogue, as it's not too different to how teens talk. No, what really grinds my gears in this movie is that Mei, a 13 year old child, twerks. Which is highly inappropriate. <laughs> And even worse, there are actual adults unironically calling this kid's movie horny. Just what? Can we please stop doing this to child characters in kids' media? Okay, rant over. And now, it is time to deliver my final thoughts on this movie. Overall, Tony Red was a mixed bag for me in several areas, from the story, animation, and characters. So, I wouldn't consider myself a fan of it. 
Although, on its own, it's still a cute and funny movie that can be enjoyable to a wide variety of people. However, I also wouldn't consider this movie to be the masterpiece it's been hyped up to be on Twitter slash YouTube. And frankly, I'm not too excited for this supposed new era of Pixar. But hey, this is just my opinion, and let's all try to be civil about this. I mean, it's just a movie after all. And that was my review of Pixar's Turning Red. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and comment. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. I'd also like to give a shout out to my $10 Patreon, John Warsex. If you too would also like a shout out my videos or just want to help support the channel, then head over to my Patreon. Well, I got nothing else to say, so... See ya!